Welcome to The Painting Coach. My name's Lloyd, and today I'm going to show you three ways to paint your Space Marine armor. Now, the best thing about these techniques is you can mix and match to suit your style. So there's going to be something for everyone in this video. I'm going to talk you through my thought process and the reason I do things in the order that I do. So I really hope you find something useful. Let's get painting. So the first method I'm going to show you is the contrast slash speed paint method. Now, as you probably guessed, I'm going to be painting some Imperial Fists in this video, but you can apply these techniques to whatever Marines you are painting. And I've got a whole playlist with pretty much any chapter you can imagine on it. So go check that out after this video. Now, with contrast, you want a nice bright base. So I've sprayed mine brown and then I've sprayed it white from above. So the majority of the model is a bright white color. And the first thing I'm going to do is base that armor. So to base all of the armor, I'm going to paint this with Imperial Fist Yellow. And because this is going over a little bit of a zenithal, it will give you some deeper shadows and it'll change the hue of the paint slightly just to give that impression. One thing that's really important for this bit is to make sure you don't spill any over all the other bits. So whilst this method's quick, in fact, this marine, not including drying time, only took about 20 minutes. You do just need to take a little bit of time and be careful around the bits that are going to be darker. When you're painting with contrast, always go from light to dark colours. I'll paint the chest eagle next, and the colour I'm use that is Sigvald Burgundy. Now, this is a very rich and powerful burgundy colour. Uh, so, like I said in the last step, you just need to be really careful in terms of getting this on any of the yellow paint. Now, I'll say this for any part, if you do make a mistake, you need to paint over something. Take some Korax white paint and just paint over the entirety of the plate that you've made the mistake other than they can rebase it with that imperial fist following the sigval burgundy i want to do all of the leather and the color i'm using with this is noble skin from the army painter speed paint range it's a really really nice dark brown color uh, that's great for leather it's great for dark flesh as well but i'm using it here all over these areas and again be very careful around the yellow armor Next up, I'll take some Black Legion and I'll use this to paint all of the joints of the armour and any black elements such as the gun casing. Again, I've been really careful here because I don't want to darken the whole gun. I just want to darken the case. And when I'm painting the two work within the armour, again, I want to be very careful not to spill this over the bits of yellow I've already finished. For any purity seal wax, I'm just using uh, some Bar Red, which is a nice powerful contrast paint. And then for the purity seal parchment, I'm using Skeleton Horde, which is a nice bone colour. Again, very easy and straightforward. We're not stressing ourselves too much at this point. For all the metallics, I'm going back to the Army Painter Speed Paint range. And I'm using Golden Armour for any gold elements, such as the decoration that we've got on the uh, front of the weapon. And then I'm going to use Broadsword Silver for all the silver parts. And without any trouble at all, we've completed this Space Marine. Like I said, you do need to take your time and really this is a good tabletop standard. You've got your three color minimum and from three feet away, it's gonna look pretty decent. So that's the first technique in painting with contrast. Let's have a look at how we use a color primer to give us the kickstart that we need. So I've used Sunset Yellow from Colorforge to prime this miniature. Now, if you can't get Color Forge where you are, it's essentially a direct match for Avalanche Sunset. So this is a nice, easy way to get started. We've got that yellow base down. And we're going to do this slightly differently to how we do the contrast version because we want to paint everything else first and then paint the armor last. And the reason for that is that we can cover up any mistakes that we might make before we go on to finishing the armor. So you'll see me here on the video. I'm just painting all of the main elements. So I'm using some black paint just to paint in the um the pikework on the armor the casing on the weapons and any other bits you want to be silver you can paint them black as well to get a bit more of a reflection when you pop that metallic color down so we're going to paint the rest of the base colors and i'm using dryad bark which is a nice kind of desaturated dark brown color for all the leather parts i'm using screamer pink for the chest eagle some retribute armor for the gold elements and then some lead belcher for the silver elements so this is fairly straightforward in terms of time taken. This set does take a little bit longer because now we've got all these elements done, we need to shade them and highlight them. So I'm going to shade all the silver elements uh, and the dark leather with some null oil, probably the chest eagle as well. And then for the retribute drama and some of that parchment, we're going to use some Agrax Earthshade. So it's nice and easy, nice and simple and straightforward. 
we do want to be really careful with this stage as well because whilst we can fix the mistakes the less mistakes we have to fix the better in the long run and the faster this process will be and obviously the more brush control you'll get you'll develop those skills and that hand-eye eye coordination which is really really important once all those washes are dry we can start to highlight things so for the silver we're using chrome from Valeo model air for the leather we're using gorth or brown which is a lighter version of that dryad bark we're going to use um some pink horror to highlight the chest eagle and then for the black elements we're going to use some german gray from ak which is a really dark gray uh, you can use something like action gray if you want and then i like the gray such as dawnstone just to do that really fine highlight and work it in there and once we've done all that we can then get some avalanche sunset out and correct any mistakes that we might have made Once we've corrected those mistakes, we need to have a little look at shading the armor. So I'm going to take some Reichland Flesh Shade and I'm going to use a brush that's got a very, very good tip. And what I'm going to do here is paint this into all of the recesses. So you've got all the armor joins. We're going to make sure we paint it in there to darken it up really nicely. Where we've got plates going over other plates, we're going to just make sure we've got that in the recess there as well. And that's going to give us a really, really nice effect. And it'll help our model stand out on the tabletop. We can then start to highlight the yellow. Now, the first color we going to use is Irreal Yellow, and this is fairly straightforward, and we're looking to just edge highlight this. So if you're not sure where edge highlights go, if you just check the box out of any Space Marine uh, box that you've got, you can see there those nice crisp edge highlights along the most raised parts of the miniature, all the sharp edges. And what we're looking to do is just paint this in and drag the brush along those elements where we can. And where we can't, just make sure we've got a really good tip and we pull it along nicely in a good straight line. And again, this is really good practice. Because whichever method you use, this is a really good skill for painting any sort of miniature. It's being able to get a good tip on your brush and painting in straight lines. Once we've finished painting with that aerial yellow, we're then going to elevate the highlight to phalanx yellow, which is a nice bright yellow. What we're looking to do is the same sort of thing, but we're looking to paint this inside the highlight of aerial yellow. So it just adds a little bit of a step in terms of the transition. And we're looking to focus this around the sharpest edges of the model. So... This, again, is another one of those steps where you just need to take your time, make sure you've got a really good point on your brush. And it's a good key skill to learn. So just practice this. And then when it comes to painting miniatures, you'll be really developing that skill set that you've got. So that is the second method done, which is the traditional layer style, uh, along with a, a color primer, which I think when you're painting lots of marines, color primers are an absolute godsend. The final method I'm going to show you on how to paint your Space Marine armor is with an airbrush. Now, of course, we will be using that layering technique from the last stage in this part as well, but we're going to put the base work down with an airbrush. Now, when you're painting yellow, putting a base of pink down and then highlighting that with white and then painting your yellow over the top will give you a really nice effect. Now, I like to use this Molotov pink, so I'm going to just airbrush this all over the miniature, making sure I've got a fairly low pressure. I don't mind if this paint doesn't come out super smooth and there's a little bit of spatter from the airbrush, the main thing here is that I get a nice even coverage and it doesn't run everywhere. For white highlights, I like to use uh, titanium white ink from Liquitex, again in the airbrush. You need to make sure this is given uh, a really good shake before you, you do spray it. And make sure this has got a fairly low pressure as well, because if you spray this at a high pressure and you've not got very good trigger control on your airbrush, then you will run the risk of actually causing spatters and spider webs, and that's going to ruin the effect. Once that's completely dry, you can then take your Imperial Fist Contrast Paint and then just gradually build up the layers of this, spraying it fairly thinly, letting it dry, and then just continually building up. And what you'll start to see is you get a really nice transition from a, an almost orangey-brown colour, like scrag brown in the recesses, to a nice, bright, really rich yellow uh, on the top plates. Now, normally I don't worry about this, but because I've used contrast paint over ink, I do want to seal it. So I am just going to put some gloss varnish over the model just to make sure that it's nice and protected. When that gloss varnish is dry, I'm going to use an oil wash to really, really bring out those recesses. So if you've not done an oil wash before, they're really easy and straightforward. All you need is some oil paint, uh, a thinner and a brush. So I'm going to use some burnt umber from Winsor & Newton. 
I'm going to pop some of this into a mixing bowl, small metal mixing bowl, and I'm then going to take a pipette's worth of odorless white spirit. I'm going to squirt this over it, mix it all together, and I'm going to get a really nice thin wash. To get this on the model, all I need to do is dip my brush in it, wick off the excess, and then just touch it in those recesses, and the capillary action will then start to draw the oil wash into all of the recesses. So you can get this done fairly quickly. And this is much quicker than doing it the way we did in the previous step with the right Rightland Flesh Shade. And the colour's a bit darker, so the recesses are much more pronounced. Now, the other good thing with the oil paint is if you make any mistakes, it's really easy to clear up. So the first thing you can do is you can take your brush, clean it off, and then you just wipe it on some paper towel so it's damp. And then you can brush over any areas where you may have put too much oil on. And this will thin it out on the model and really help it to get into the recesses, but also take away any ugly smudging that you may have already got on there. The other thing you can do is take a cotton bud or a Q-tip if you're in the US and use this to wipe across the panels of the miniature. Now it's worth saying you do have to let the paint set up a little bit. So maybe give it 10 minutes before you go at it with a cotton bud. And if it's too much coming off, then give it another 5-10 minutes again before you go back to it with the cotton bud. And this is a nice easy way of just making sure that all that surface is nice and clean and the oil wash is only in the recesses. I then throw a little bit of matte varnish back over that marine and that really starts to bring out the yellow, the transition and those colours in the recesses. And this is looking great already. So all I need to do now is just very carefully go in and paint all of the other areas. In terms of painting the rest of the model, we're going to do this in an almost identical way to how we did the last stage. So I'm not going to talk you through them. You can just see in the background as it plays out, I'm using the same kind of colours. I'm blocking them together in terms of what needs to be washed by which colour. And that just really helps me speed things along, whilst not also making sure that the process isn't entirely boring. Because if you're painting these in squads of 10, 20 at a time, it can potentially get quite monotonous. So I just wanted to talk through my preferences, what I like to do when it comes to painting marine armour. And you may well have guessed it, but I really do prefer the airbrush method. Now, when you, if you haven't got an airbrush, you could potentially try dry brushing some of these highlights on as well. And what's important is choosing the right undercolor. So for yellow, pink as an undercolor with white over the top is really, really nice. For most other colors, you can probably get away with using a black base and then using white prime over the top. And that'll give you a nice effect. And if you've seen some of my videos, such as how to paint uh, blood angels quickly, how to paint salamanders quickly, that's exactly what I do. And that's red and green. Uh, colors going over uh, white and black prime and the and the end result is really nice uh, and effective so you can always do that um i was quite impressed with how quick the contrast method was i quite enjoyed that uh, in terms of setting myself a little bit of a challenge see how fast i could be it's not as tidy as i would be normally in fact none of these marines are as tidy as i would uh, normally be but that's sometimes the difficult thing about filming is getting your hands in awkward positions and and having that balance but certainly out of the three, I do really prefer that airbrush uh, marine the most. So let me know in the comments which one you prefer. Let me know your own methods uh, for getting space marine armor painted. I'd be really interested to hear that. And the other thing I'd really be interested to hear, would you be interested in a beginner's airbrushing tutorial? Because it's not something I've done on the channel much in the past. In fact, I've probably got a handful of videos that use an airbrush. Uh, but is this something in my day-to-day -day hobby I do use a lot more? So I'd like to share that with you. So do let me know if you'd like to see that. Uh, but otherwise, this model is now finished. I'm really happy with how it's come out. So let's wrap things up. So there we have it. Three ways of painting your Space Marine armor. And like I said right at the start, you can really mix and match to get the effect that you want. Now, it would be remiss of me if I didn't recommend two people that I really admire who can take your skills to the next level as well. The first is Infernal Brush, who is an ex heavy metal painter and will show you how to really refine that layer painting heavy metal style and the other is Juan Hidalgo who is the contrast master so check out their videos on the screen I really appreciate you watching and I will see you next time